All right, we are back for another episode of Love It There. This weekend is the Michigan State IU football game. Family rivalry is intense. The group chat is already getting a little heated. (laughs) And we are all ready to come down to Bloomington for the weekend and have a little family gathering, a little family tailgate. So we're all pretty excited. The trash talking is hilarious, though, because both IU and Michigan State's football teams this year are just trash. I mean, they're not They're actually the two worst teams in the Big Ten, I think, so it's going to be, like, funny to watch. Yeah, I mean, they're they're (laughs) equally bad, so I think the game might be close. I don't know. (laughs) No, do you know that IU is, like, predicted to win? Yes. I did not. They're bad. Michigan State's bad. I mean... Yeah, I know normally Michigan State Michigan State and IU do not have, like, this big rivalry. This is literally just in our family because yeah. Holly w- goes to IU and I went to Michigan State. So not a normal rivalry, just in our family. But, yeah, I mean, they are both equally bad. So it might be a close game, but it won't be, a, it won't be good football that we're watching. Yeah, but it will be good tailgating. So at least we can count on that. Hallie is wearing her green right now to support I Michigan know. State. I wore my spirit wear for I know. this episode, and she shows up in a Michigan State green top. Okay. As soon as I see Kelsey's video and I saw she was wearing a Michigan State shirt, I was like, okay, I literally didn't even mean to do this, but it looks like I'm an MSU fan now because I'm wearing this color green, but I'm not. I don't support, but if you haven't put it together already – The reason we're talking about this football game is because this week we're talking about East Lansing, Michigan, and that is where Michigan State is. It's in East Lansing. So we thought it'd be fun since we have this big rivalry weekend coming up to kind of let Kelsey relive her glory days, some of her favorite moments from Michigan State, and kind of give us a little bit of an insight as to what it looks like if you're a student at MSU and life in East Lansing. Not so, my glory days, but just some good some good mems for sure. Okay, so not your peak. Uh, I don't know what my peak was. Uh, I remember how it peaked in college. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone does. Like that's okay. not like you don't have to be ashamed. Like all right, that's fair. I feel like that's normal. Well, I'll let the people be the judge of that. Okay. When they see some of these photos that are going to be on the gram. (laughs) Maybe they're like, ooh, maybe not. (laughs) But make sure you stay tuned to the very end of the episode because we're going to do our fun announcement, which we talked a little bit about last week. But we're going to tell you what that is at the end of today's episode. So make sure you stick around for that. And without further ado, we hope you enjoy today's episode on East Lansing, Michigan. Okay, so I sent a message in my group chat with, like, all my college friends, and I was like, our next podcast episode is going to be on East Lansing. Like, everybody send me, like, your favorite memories from our time there or just, like, your favorite part of going to school there or whatever. And so then our group chat just starts exploding with all these old, like, pictures and videos of all of us from college. And it was so funny because so many of, like, all the videos that were, like, house parties – all night longer by sammy adams was always playing in the background <laughs> that's like, so classic that was our anthem and it was just hilarious it was so funny but one moment in particular that was brought up and this is like a moment where if you ask an msu student who if you ask an msu fan in 2015 where they were on this day they can tell you people remember it was one of those iconic moments the oh moment boy. I'm talking about is the trouble with the snap game. So if you don't know, this was so, you know, Hallie and I are talking about the Michigan State IU rivalry. Michigan State doesn't care about IU. I'm going to be honest. They're only IU true, doesn't like, care about Michigan State. So it yeah. goes both ways. OK, fair, <laughs> fair. But this football game that I'm talking about in 2015 was against Michigan. And that's like the IU Purdue equivalent is the Michigan state Michigan rivalry. So both teams were so good that year and the game was at Michigan and MSU was down 20 to 23 with 10 seconds left. And so most everybody thought this game was over and 
all my like college friend group was like all together at somebody's house watching this football game and we're all like defeated and sad you know there's 10 seconds left and yeah. Michigan has the ball so but they're about to punt it away and the snap back to the punter was like low and it was fumbled and so the announcer there's this Hallie doesn't know this. Any Michigan State fans will see know exactly what I'm talking about when the announcer's like, oh, there's trouble with the snap. Well, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free. It's picked up by Michigan State. Jalen wants Jackson, and he scores on the last play of the game. Unbelievable. So the MSU player, like, is able to pick up this fumbled snap and run it 30 eight yards or whatever down for a touchdown and so we won at the last minute and that's crazy it was the most insane ending to a game I mean this is like the viral like the Michigan guy like that's yeah. like memed of him just like hands on head like jaw dropped and and then <laughs> that's the so bad MSU player that scored the winning touchdown like got piled on like the whole team ran out there and like piled on him to like celebrate and he broke his hip and had to go get <gasps> surgery yes yeah, so oh my god just, like crazy things I didn't know about but that oh game god. is such an iconic game and everybody will be able to tell you exactly where they were when that happened and such a core memory but yeah I have this wild video of all of us just like freaking out and screaming and celebrating when that happened it was so cool okay so you talked a little bit about like your friend group when you guys were all watching the game together so for context Kelsey was really close with the people on the Michigan State cross-country team because she was on the team so like obviously that takes up a lot of a lot of your time so you guys spent most of your time with each other so talk a little bit about like best memories with the team or like any traditions you guys had together like fill me in on that yeah. yes my teammates yeah we were all best friends and I don't have a single memory from MSU basically that's like not involved with like my teammates we lived together we did everything together best friends and some of my favorite memories honestly were just times when we were all just like hanging out and doing nothing. Like we had this thing called case fever that we would call it. And case was the cafeteria that we, that the freshmen um, would eat at. And so a lot of like the upperclassmen even would come and like sit at case and we would um, eat breakfast there. And then a lot of times like enough people would just come and go. Cause we'd have one spot in the cafeteria where we would always sit. And so you would just know where you could go and somebody from the team would be there. And That's sometimes, so yes, you know, people would come and go, go to class, whatever, but sometimes you'd just sit and just more people would come. And so you'd just talk and chat. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, Hey, it's lunchtime or whatever. And then you like end up eating all three of your meals there basically because oh my like, you don't have to leave because everybody's just hanging out and I don't know that was just like something that I'll that, that I've missed a lot since leaving college is just being able to like go to this cafeteria and knowing somebody that I know is going to be here that I'll just be able to hang out with and yeah and have a good time with but I don't know those just like simple moments of just like quality time with your best friends are like I don't know it's something I like cherish I know it sounds so stupid but I miss no it's that not and I feel like those are the friendships that are like most impressive is when you guys can have like the best time when you're not even like doing anything the fact that you just like enjoy each other's company that much that you have really good memories where you're not even like doing anything that special just hanging out like those are like when you know it's a good friendship I feel like yeah for sure we did have our fun, you know, our, our one night a year, basically, that we had a good time. <laughs> so if y'all know, I mean, a lot of the people listening were runners or still are runners. But if you know a runner, especially a collegiate runner, you know, don't they don't really do a whole lot other than like run when they're in college as far as like going out and partying. But we had our one big night of the year, which was like our end of season party or we called it like team party because it was the one night the whole team goes out and celebrates um, and it was after national. So we had our national cross country meet in the morning, which usually was it was yeah, it was out of state, but we would drive back after the race and then just basically go straight to this 
house party that was like our big celebration. And this party gets so out of hand because it's all these skinny runner people that don't drink <laughs> that don't haven't party. had a sip of alcohol since like probably may exactly and they probably <laughs> half of them like ran that morning a really so hard they're depleted com- yes of like everything <laughs> and then they just go straight to this house party and start pounding the alcohol but everybody talked about this party all year because it was our one night you know like Sometimes people would be able to like go out and like have fun every once in a while. But this is the only day when like every single person from the team is is going to yeah. be there. But yeah, we, the, one of my favorite parts of this was the next morning after the team party, we all have like a little debrief of like what happened. And oh, the debriefs are oh, so yeah, good. Love a good morning I love after debrief. A good debrief. Because you know there's so much going on that you can't keep track of everything that happens. Well, and there's, like, so much that happens behind the scenes that, like, you're not even aware of. And then people talk about it the next day, and you're like, where was I? How did I have no idea this was happening? Yes, and you, like, pull out your phones and get the video evidence (laughs) that you didn't even realize that you took. And it's just great. So so good. But with any good, you know co-ed team situation going on you know there's a little bit of like mix and matching going on if you know what I'm saying so that's when we would use our whiteboard situation to do a little hookup chart of all that happened and try to keep it straight and so (laughs) I have the most amazing picture of our one of our hookup charts after one of the team parties of what happened with arrows and a key for kissing or doing more than that and like everything and it's so great that's so funny it's so funny like hearing you talk about this because literally like okay so I live with runners like girls that are on the team at IU and they just had regionals and like the team didn't qualify for nationals so they just had their big party after regionals right. literally this past Saturday and it was at our house oh, so I didn't know that yes so and mom and dad if you're listening they came to our house literally the next morning and it was not a pretty sight <laughs> so I apologize that they had to see that because I did not think that one through but <laughs> it's just funny like hearing you talk about this because I literally just experienced it like two days oh, yeah. ago oh yeah no you know it's not <laughs> like the MSU was a unique entity that did this that every school does you know every no, it's, team has it's, their end of season party it's just like because it's runners and because oh, yeah. they're all like so tiny just like tiny people that haven't drank in so long and they all just like go so hard and like so much drama happens and well, it's just funny too because this is something that you've never seen like you know you see these very rigid disciplined people all of a sudden letting loose yeah. and you're like this is amazing where have you like, been your whole life Whoa. yeah <laughs> yeah oh my gosh but speaking of like charts that we would make another funny thing we did was we made a champions bracket for the men's team where we basically took all the men and put them in this bracket and we decided who was the hottest guy on the team oh and it was God. like March Madness style where it was like a 2v2 <laughs> and then we just you know who's the hottest out of these two okay this person they get to the next round and then we'd go down until we got to a final one and we did this on like one of my my room one of my roommates sophomore year she had like this erasable like chalkboard thing that you could write on with marker but it okay. like wasn't erasable like the markers were so old or something or maybe they were the wrong type of markers it couldn't erase and so now this bracket was stuck on this like chalkboard (laughs) thing and we couldn't get permanent evidence oh it's permanent (laughs) of our like breakdown of every single person on the team and like who was hotter and so we tried to like erase it couldn't erase it and eventually by the end of the year we're like okay we have to get rid of this so we like took it to the recycling center on campus and we just like set it out on the recycling just in case somebody could happen to like stumble upon it and just be like what is this yeah so, yeah that was too good I think that did was, anybody like, ever find it no nobody ever found it we just brought this up recently when we were with a bunch of the guys because I think they were like fighting about like 
oh, I'm hotter than so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow. As all real we, men do. Yeah. I was like, we beg to differ. I think we could pull out our bracket that we made and we could tell you who was the hottest. And it was none of y'all. So <laughs> although I You're personally, like, <laughs> I did not agree. I was outnumbered because there was like five of us voting on this. Like all our roommate sophomore year, we were all doing it. And I was outnumbered. So the champion, I did not personally think he was the hottest, but because well your guys' team is pretty was pretty big right like how many yeah. guys were on the team um there was probably there was at least like 40 people on this bracket probably that's crazy because I yeah. use team is so small yeah no yeah it was it was like a normal like March Madness style bracket that's hilarious <laughs> yeah it was great it was so oh good <laughs> but yeah and then my last like favorite 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 memory of like doing something with the team was when we all went to crunchies which crunchies is a karaoke bar on campus it's my favorite place on campus by far um and yeah we would basically have this time period of after the cross country season ended and then before everybody went home for thanksgiving break so like iu i know usually after nationals you have a, that whole next week off but michigan state has like three days that week before we can go home for Thanksgiving break. But we have class, but nobody's we're done with a cross country season. Yeah, nobody like everybody's checked out at that point. So basically, like every single night that week, we go to crunchies and we do like karaoke. And again, it's like, special because I had been to crunchies, you know, I, I go to crunchies and do the karaoke thing sometimes like with a smaller group, but when the whole team just takes over the bar and we're <laughs> all there just like singing and like, uh, yeah, it's just, that's like by far my favorite, favorite memory of MSU. I yeah. love crunchies. And that's where we went last year for the MSU IU football game because it was, that was so, crunchies. Yeah, that was crunchies. Oh, yeah okay so yeah we went last year the msu iu football game was at michigan state and it was so cold and it was so snowy it was so. actually a blizzard we walk into the stadium and there are literal snow drifts on the bleachers like we're like trying to move the snow off the bleachers yeah. so we can sit down it was so bad so we made it to halftime which honestly i'm i'm impressed with us that we I did know. that we stuck it out but yeah, so then we went to Crunchies and finished the game there. So yeah, you watched Hallie, IU win. Yeah, you ended up winning. But yeah, Hallie, you'll have to come back sometime and when we can do do Crunchies karaoke and, and do it, you know, the night lifestyle. I know. I wanna experience this. I wanna experience a true night out, like when there's students and yeah, I can well, actually even because you didn't even get the frozen. real tailgating experience because there was like nobody there right. tailgating this game, which was so sad that you guys didn't get to experience that. So I know. Next year, hopefully. Okay. We'll run it back. Yeah. Okay. So you brought up Crunchies. What are the other like main bars on campus that everybody goes to? Okay. Rick's is my other favorite. I feel like. I've heard I of that like, one. Yeah. I feel like that's the most popular, the most like MSU it's like the classic like greasy basement bar and yeah. but it's just like the best <laughs> I just love it I have so many good memories from there is that and like the most popular I with think students? so I mean people say like Harper's I think is the other one but I hate it I, I just personally never had a good time at Harper's I felt like like we had this thing called you it, STR which is straight to Rick so like I feel like you you know okay. you'd be like Oh, when we get back to Emma, like STR, like, you know, you'd be gone for the weekend or something and people say that. So I'm like, okay. I feel like Rick's was definitely the most, most popular. Um, I feel like Harper's is a close second, but to me, it doesn't compare. It was like Crunchies or Rick's for me. And that was all, that was, those were the only places I was going. But one of my favorite memories from Rick's actually is like once when we were walking home from it and this was after Jackson's 21st birthday and it's just me and Jackson walking back from the bar and it's probably like I don't know like at least a two mile walk back to our house oh geez yeah <laughs> I never took an and Uber you were in walking. yeah we were walking we we're just drunk and in love you know yeah I guess yeah yeah when you're drunk it, time flies like. oh yeah it was fine <laughs> and I was wearing this like teeny little like shirt 
you know, and I'm like shivering and we're newly dating. So Jackson literally takes the shirt off his back and puts it on me. So then he's walking back shirtless and I have this <laughs> little shirt on that Jackson gave me. And so then he goes, oh, you know, there's a tradition that if you kiss underneath Beaumont Tower, you're going to get married. This is literally we were dating for one month. And I was like, <laughs> oh, really? Like, that's kind of out of the way. Like, that's in that direction. Are you wanting to go there? And he just, like, drags me, like, pulls my arm and, like, leads me that way. So we walk, Jackson. like, another – we walk, like, another mile out of the way to this – the Beaumont Tower. It's, like, this bell um, clock tower um, on MSU's campus. And so – yeah, then we like kiss underneath the tower and then we like walk the rest of the way back home. And that yeah. is bold, Jackson. I respect yes. it. One month in. I know. He, ju he just knew. Oh, yeah, he knew. I told him I loved him that night and I said, One month don't in. Don't say it back. Yeah, I said, Don't say it back. <laughs> Maybe I'll cut this. So out of the you podcast. said it first. We know this is good. I haven't heard this. Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't know that you said it first. Oh, yes, of course I did. Yeah. That you guys are both bold. Wow. Well, I mean, he basically asked me to marry him that night and pretty much. So yeah. I was feeling the love. So, yeah, I told him I loved him that night. But and I'm he gave like, you the shirt off his back. Truly. I think that was what <laughs> did it for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. Oh, but another thing I want to say about Beaumont Tower, though, that so it's the clock is has Roman numerals for the number. So Roman numerals is IV for four and mm -hmm. Beaumont Tower. It's four ones as number four because they didn't they thought the IV looked too much like IU and they didn't want a Big Ten rivalry initials. That's funny. On the Beaumont Tower. So, oh, I think Michigan State does care a little bit about you know, they IU must have in, They must be a little intimidated. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> That's funny though. Yeah. But okay, let's see. A couple other like bar event sort of things so there's ramas on thursdays which i feel like hallie you've told me something that iu has similar this is like it opens at 10 a.m but people are lined up outside it's at like this breakfast bar club. called the riv yeah okay it's similar to that so it's at this bar called the riv um and it's called rama it's short for burger rama because they have five dollar pitchers and two dollar burgers on mm -hmm. the on the Thursdays and so everybody lines up super super early to get into Rama everybody wears jerseys and do people not have class I'm confused no I mean I went once in my life because I always had Thursday class and we would have practice Thursday afternoons so I forget the one Thursday I was able to go it was like during finals week or something when I didn't have a class or something yeah and so a group of us were able to go literally once um but people either just like skip class or they just purposely don't take Thursday classes so that they could go to Rama every week what? I don't know but it was that's always, crazy yeah it was always insane and I was like yeah maybe someday I'll go I went once but that was super super fun that's a very yeah, MSU thing to do yeah that sounds really fun and it's like we have breakfast club but that's always like Saturday mornings before football games or basketball yeah. games yeah that's so yeah, fun so though it's always Thursday I want to go and to then, Rama yeah no it was great it was so fun Okay, what about restaurants? Are you guys no do you guys have like good food on campus? Like what do you people usually go? Yeah. So to eat the at? restaurant scene, well, let me just say MSU has done a ton since I graduated. It looks very different. Like the main strip is Grand River where all the bars and restaurants are and stuff and it's really built up and there's a lot of new stuff that wasn't there when I was there. Okay. Um, but the cafeteria is honestly were really really good at MSU there were so many calves and their their food was good so we didn't really go out to eat a whole lot one being in college and poor and then yeah. two, the calves were good honestly that there was enough variety that we were we would just go hang out there like I mentioned before so do upperclassmen get like meal plans there is that yeah normal? it's like pretty popular for them to get meal plans where you can at least go like two to three times a week and and eat at the calves because that's like unheard of at IU like yeah 
if you have a meal plan and you're not a freshman, like that's weird because I use like notorious for their bad dining hall food. Whereas like Michigan state is is, like when, like I've eaten at the dining halls when you went there and like the food was so good. So good. Especially like being on the team, you know, our practice would go late. And by the time these people get back to their like apartments off campus, they don't want to cook. So they'll just go in the calf. And so it was super easy, but, um, Actually, the best ever sushi place I've ever been to is on East Lansing's campus. It's called really? Sansu. And yeah, I've never had better sushi anywhere else. So yeah, it's so good and so random. Um, and then I'll there's have a to try that and compare it to Quixote. I was going to say, yeah, compare it to your, your Michelin <laughs> My star Michelin sushi. star sushi. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It might not be as good as that, but it's the best sushi I've ever had. So And it's like they do it like authentic where you sit on the floor on pillows on the floor and yeah, That's so, so it's fun. fun. You don't have to do, they have like regular tables, but they have that experience where you can do that too. So cool. that was always fun. And then, so Blondie's is always where we would go. Um, it was like not really on campus, but it's a little bit like maybe 10 minute drive off campus, but it's got the best brunch. And that's where we would usually go when you need like a hung- good, like hungover brunch place. You'd go to Blondie's and it's- did I go there with you yes. that one time? Yes. Okay. Yes. In that big okay. barn thing. Yeah. 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 And they, their coffee mugs are like saucers. Giant. And so big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, the last, like, this is an ice cream place, but the amount of times we would go here, I started like keeping track of like how much money I spent at Tasty <laughs> Twist, this ice cream place. They mostly it, they have do like blizzards and stuff, basically okay. like mixers. And oh my gosh, we would they, we seriously would go there so much, but it was the best, so good. So yeah, those are my top recommendations. <laughs> Sounds good. I feel like yeah. you covered all the bases there. Yeah, brunch, sushi, and ice cream. What else do you need? Yeah, there you it's go. All rounded day. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, what else? What are some other like random funny stories, fun spots on campus? What else do you got for us? Okay, something I did want to mention is because this is different than IU too. Like IU is super, super hilly. So people mm-hmm. I feel like walk or take the bus. But MSU's campus is really flat and it's big. So it's perfect, honestly, for biking. So pretty much everybody bikes to class on campus, but it's really dangerous because people bike really fast. The streets and sidewalks are so crowded with students that you'll see some bad bike accidents. And (laughs) also people just have the jankiest bikes where their brakes don't work. Like, like yours. Oh, mine was so bad. I'll tell that story (laughs) next. But (laughs) I was riding with Jessica, one of my roommates in college, or one of my best friends in college and her bike did not have brakes. And so she was trying to like, yeah, like none, like no, no brakes. How do you even do that? So she'd try to just like not stop and just like, she'd, we'd be like riding our bikes down the street and the crosswalk would change to a stop and she'd be like, Oh, got to turn this way. And then she'd like turn down the side. I'm like, okay, bye. One time or she'll, she'd like try to like ride in the grass to like slow her down until she could like stop with her foot or something. But one time she, she literally rode her bike up a tree because she was trying to like stop, but she just like, ran into this tree and it like turned up on her and then it like did she like flip backwards she didn't like flip backwards or she like fell off her bike from like riding up this tree just like crazy people just do crazy things and yeah did anyone you know ever get hit by a car on their bike probably I can't think of any specific situations but there was really bad bike accidents for sure what's like the worst one you ever saw so you know how the bikes have like the ho- the handlebars with like the hooks kind of like more of like a speed oh, yes. bike where they have like yes. the hooks that go underneath. So two people were crossing go or going opposite directions and their handles hooked each other. So they spun around <gasps> and like flew off their bikes and yeah, oh it was, there was God. like a lot of like blood and it was it was bad. But That's no, so my wild. story of me crashing. This is the worst bike crash I had. So. My bike also, the brakes were not good. And 
So, cause you don't want to bring your nice bike to MSU because people steal bikes. So yeah, the brakes didn't work. So I'm riding down again, MSU was very flat, but there was this one place where it was such a gradual downhill, but it was really long. So I literally thought to myself like, wow, I'm like flying right now. And then I take this turn and all of a sudden there were stairs in front of me. And I guess I just forgot that the stairs, there wasn't like a ramp to this part. It was stairs. So I'm like, my brakes don't work. So I'm not going to be able to like stop before I hit these stairs. I'm going so fast. So I was just going to go like bump, 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 and just like bump down the stairs with my bike. Oh, <laughs> well, not only did the brakes not work, but the wheel kept like turning. So when I hit the first step, my oh, wheel no. turned perpendicular to my handlebars. And so then I just flew off my bike and my backpack flew down off the stairs. Oh, down, tumbled down the stairs. My backpack oh flew my off in God. one direction. My water bottle flew off in the other out of my backpack. I like skidded on the sidewalk. And I get up and one girl saw me. She was walking by and she just goes, are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> surprisingly, yes, I am. So nothing is more humbling than like you being by yourself and strangers seeing you fall. Like Honestly, though, I'm glad somebody saw me because it's worse when you fall or do something embarrassing and like you're in a public place, but you're like... I don't have anybody to like laugh with about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like at least I was like, dude, that was wild. Did you see that? Like, like, yeah. You get up. You're like, did anybody just, see that? yeah. I just get up. I'm like, I was wearing like jeans. I'm like, my jeans didn't even rip. I'm like, this is amazing. Like I'm okay. Like it's all good. So, oh my God. I literally just walk my bike because I was going to practice and I was so close to practice. And so I just like, walk my bike over to the bike rack, rack it up on the bike rack, oh and then God. go into practice. Probably Was your bike rideable after that? So I think it was still, I think I walked my bike out of humility. I'm like, I'm not about to try to get back on this bike after <laughs> I just had that crazy wreck. So I just walked it over to the bike rack, but I'm pretty sure after practice, I rode it back, I rode it home. Oh my gosh. So. Okay, wait. So I want to talk about basketball a little bit and then I don't you didn't go to very many games when you were an undergrad right yeah I went to like none okay because we got free football tickets being an athlete we they gave us tickets to football but we didn't get free tickets to basketball that's and, crazy yeah and so I went to a few basketball games but yeah, sadly, I didn't go no more. And I should have brought Jackson on to be the spokesperson for MSU yeah. basketball because he's the biggest MSU basketball fan. And that's so. what I was going to bring up because this is well, maybe you don't have permission to bring this up. But one of my like favorite stories about Jackson is that when he watches MSU basketball games, he truly believes <laughs> that if he can I can I yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about this? Oh, for okay. sure. You could yeah. <laughs> okay. So when Jackson watches Michigan State basketball games, he truly believes that if he starts doing push-ups, they'll play better. <laughs> so <laughs> and the first time Kelsey told me this, I like died laughing because I can just like picture him in the living room being like Oh yeah. Hyping up the boys, getting down there and doing some push-ups. <laughs> oh he literally he's it's so sweet that he like <laughs> he like doesn't even like to talk bad about them ever. He's like, you got to you got to show that you believe them. And, you know, you you know, you got to stand behind your boys and make sure they know that you're never going to doubt them. And like <laughs> all this stuff. He's so funny. And he oh is a true fan. I will give that to him. He will always. Be an MSU fan, like he's yes. not a bandwagon at all. So. Oh no, I, I respect not. it. I respect it for sure. Yeah, but I give him a hard time now, like especially when IU plays Michigan State. I'll be like, Jackson, you better get ready to do some push-ups. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that'll check back in with us in basketball season because IU's supposed to be good this year, right? Mm. Oh, are they we'll not? see. Okay, we lo we lost our two best players. Um, oh, okay, Never like mind. at the end of last season. But we'll see. We'll see. Well, I think they have some work to do. But yeah, I was like, hopefully basketball will give us 
give us something to root for this year. You guys are teams. ranked like what two? Four right now. Oh, four. Yeah, yeah. that's so, really good. Yeah, we'll see. It, yeah, but yeah, I love MSU basketball. Is great. I mean, they've always been one of you know the top contenders making the tournament and stuff like that at least mm -hmm. um, for a long time. So yeah, I feel like you definitely can't talk about MSU without talking about the basketball team. I wish I. That is probably one of my regrets of not going to more basketball games while I was there. Honestly, going to more sporting events, it's just, it's tough. Like you're so tired and like, you know, when you're an athlete, it's very yeah, different. It's, and you know, I'm not trying to complain about being on the team because that brought me my best friends and, you know, so many great experiences being on the team. I mean, our, the Michigan state women's cross country team won nationals my freshman year, which was just mm -hmm. like the coolest thing ever. I mean, that team was awesome. And just being around like all of Michigan state's athletic programs that were all relatively good. Um, mm -hmm. and like the gymnastics team was fun. You know, just, I tried to go to a few different sporting competitions or games or whatever. Um, but I wish I could have gone to more just being an athlete takes up your time so that you can't even really go do all those other things. So that is why I'm like happy for you, Hallie, that you're able to, you've been able to kind of have like a true well-rounded college experience. Like I wouldn't change mine for anything. I'm so happy yeah. the way I did it and it brought me so much, but yeah, it's like a give and take being an athlete. It's like a sacrifice that you're going to sacrifice some other things, but um, it also gives you experiences though, that like no other normal college student is going to have right. like, yeah. yeah, you miss out on some of the normal college experiences, but you're also getting so many additional experiences that oh, are like sure. so much more unique. So yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. I'm not like not trying to complain about it at all, but it's just different. You're going to get different, different things depending on what you do. But yeah. Is there like a run that is like very memorable to you. Like one practice that like sticks out in your mind. I'm just thinking of all these like hard workouts that we did and just like how tough they were. But that's like what brought us all so close. You know, my like core group of girls that were in my grade on that team, you know, we're so close now. Like we still mm -hmm. talk all the time and because going through hard stuff like that just really like bonds you more than anything else could. And same with honestly, like my high school friends that were mm -hmm. on the cross country team with me, like I'm still so such good friends with them and those bonds just will never go away. And so, yeah, I think that's the going through all those hard workouts with them really solidified our friendship. But <laughs> I did just think of this one run when we were running back from a workout so we're like on our cool down but we're all in like our sports bras and spandex because it was hot this is like at the end after our workout mm -hmm. and there was a guy on a motorcycle that was driving by us and he like had his head turned looking towards us as he's driving and he literally <laughs> rear-ended a car in front of him because he was just staring at all of us and we're all just running by like nice dude <laughs> yeah and you like run by him as he's like in another car literally just like good luck with that yeah Have a good literally. night <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. So good. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Okay. What about dorm life freshman year? What was your dorm? <sighs> what dorm were you in? What was your experience? Oh, yes. I should definitely talk about that. Okay. We stayed in Wonders, which is in the South neighborhood. Um, it was kind of a crappy dorm. There was no cafeteria. So we had to go across the quad over to Case Cafeteria, which I talked about earlier. Um, and, but we, we had suites. So freshman year, it was like me and my roommate, and then we shared a bathroom and then there was two other girls on the team. That's um, nice. Yeah. So that setup was really good. Honestly, one of my favorite memories was it was like me and Jessica and then Jackson and two of the other guys on the team freshman year just like hung out for like six hours just literally like sitting in our dorm and <laughs> just doing nothing like we weren't drinking we weren't doing anything like we were just like being dumb and just I don't know just like hanging out with each other and yeah it was just so fun so, I don't have like any didn't throw have like a single party in our dorm room like we didn't do anything like you know, we were very good, good little college students. At well, that you time. had to be when you were yeah. like pushing your bodies to their absolute limits every single day. So yeah, that's like fair enough. Okay. So you, so 
Jackson, Kelsey's yes. now husband. Yeah. So you guys meet freshman year. What took so long to get till junior year before you started dating? Oh my gosh, we're getting all into this. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's a part of the Michigan State story. It is. Jackson is the best thing that Michigan State brought like provided oh, to me for sure like that's that no, was so cute I mean that's that was like, cute I, I love my friends but like yeah can't I beat got, the hubby yeah so freshman year I came in and I had a boyfriend already so we were able to just be like I mean we were all friends the whole like freshman class were friends and Jackson was roommates with somebody on the team so even though Jackson wasn't on the team our like freshman class were all friends with each other so he was just kind of lumped in um Mm -hmm. to that group so we were all just hanging out and since I already had a boyfriend that was at a different school there was no like weird like I felt like I was able to really become like close friends with the guys without it because there's no pressure like yeah nobody's like oh you guys should date blah 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 like I knew I already had a boyfriend and so it wasn't weird um and so I felt like that really helped like solidify our friendship because Jess actually too my friend that I talked about she had a boyfriend as well that didn't go to Michigan State and so I felt like that's how we we were able to like we weren't trying to go out and like meet people like meet boy yeah. guys and stuff like that. So like a lot of times Saturday nights, we were just hanging back at our suite. And then some of the other guys on the team that were just like chilling, they would come down and hang out with us too. And so we were able to get to be really close friends with them. Yeah. And so that was freshman year, sophomore year. I was single, but we had moved into apartments off campus and the guys still stayed back in the dorm another year. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. Because they Why? were – because you know how it is you have to plan for your next year's living so far in advance you get to campus Mm -hmm. as a freshman that fall and basically a month later you need to figure out who you're living with next year and sign your lease and of course the guys aren't going to be on top of that so they missed the missed the budget or missed the ball and they had to sign or stay in the dorms for another year so sucks is that like weird like are there sophomores that stay on campus or was that like very odd that they were in a dorm are yeah I mean they like almost were so late that they almost didn't have a dorm to stay in though because they like didn't decide like I'm pretty sure the coaches had to like pull some strings to like let them stay in the dorms yeah so they were inches away from being homeless basically (laughs) yeah so they stayed in the dorm so we would like see each other but less because we were off campus they were still in the dorm so Jackson's roommate at the time was dating one of my roommates whenever my roommate's boyfriend was coming to visit him her I was like okay you have to bring Jackson like if if he's coming, like Jackson needs to come too. And so they would like come over to our apartment and we'd just like all hang out or whatever. So um, at this point, were you like saying that because you like wanted to get like wanted to hang out with Jackson, like because you liked him or just because like you're are you purely thinking like, oh, I like we're just friends or like he, where's your head at? I didn't like him at this point. I feel like maybe subconsciously I did a little bit, but I honestly genuinely just like liked hanging out with him. Okay. So, but then it really, and he'll like deny this, but really it was our spring break of sophomore year. He was like texting me because the boys were going down to Florida and the girls were going to South Carolina. And see, we were both like on long car rides. And so Jackson's like texting me just like, cause we both knew what we were doing. You know, we're bored. We're like texting, whatever. And that wasn't weird. Like we texted before we were friends, But what was weird was that, you know, when you're texting your friends, you don't like keep the conversation going or like when you're done texting, you're not like, okay, I'm going to bed. Like, good night. Like, you don't do that if it's just friends. But on that, that day, he was like, okay, have fun with the girls. Like, good night. Like, talk to you later or whatever. So I feel like that was like the first time when I was like, okay, this guy likes me. Like, what is he doing? Did you like think that in the moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. I definitely did. Yeah. Okay. Because that was weird because we didn't do, we texted, but we didn't do like that type of text. Yeah. You know, because we were friends. So yeah. Like, anyways. So that kind of started over our spring break. But we both had like wild spring breaks. So it's not like we were like (laughs) trying to like 
settle down in that moment. Like the feelings like, were there, but not that there. Exactly. Like, they, they were just like on the surface. Exactly. <laughs> that was my first spring break, like single. So I was like, spring yeah, break, do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then shortly after, so we were like texting through the whole spring break, like texting a lot. And okay. um, then we get back. And that's when Jackson got really sick and he was in the ICU. And so his one of our other like another teammate of mine had like reached out to me and he was like, hey, Kelsey, like, I don't know if you know, but like Jackson wanted me to tell you the reason he's not texting you is because he's in the hospital. And I was like, oh, my gosh, no, like I didn't know that. Like uh, he wasn't texting me, but that wasn't that weird. Like. Yeah, we were texting when we were on spring break, but we got back to campus. I didn't think a single thing of it. Yeah. I hadn't heard from him in a couple of days. So, yeah, for those that don't know, Jackson got like really sick. He had like this autoimmune disease and he was in the ICU for like five, six weeks, um, our soft- spring of our sophomore year of college. And he's f- fine, recovered great, but it was like really, really bad. And so I visited him in the hospital and yeah, I just felt like that I like cared about him way more than I would have if it was just like a friend that was sick. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was like really, really worried about him. And, but obviously we couldn't, I mean, he couldn't even communicate. When I went to visit him, he was writing on a whiteboard because he had a trach in because his That's lungs like were so paralyzed. Crazy. Yeah. He couldn't, his, whole like lower body was paralyzed so he was stuck in this bed and then he his lungs couldn't move so he got trached whatever so he's communicating to me writing on a whiteboard and um yeah so that was just like crazy and then he had to come keep coming back down to school for in that summer to finish up the classes that he missed he was in the ICU for the remainder of the spring semester basically um And so I was living on campus that summer. And so whenever he would come down to campus, we would like hang out or he'd like, you know, Mm -hmm. just like spend the afternoon with us before he'd drive back or whatever. And so I felt like that was when I was like, okay, I feel like I kind of like him, like trying to figure out what's going on. But then he would like text me and then I'd get annoyed with him texting me. So then he... Why? Because it was like too much? Gosh, he was not a good texter, you guys. He was so... (laughs) just like what would he, he do still like a, a terrible texter like just like dry or just what? yeah forcing the conversation and just nothing fun well like, Kels, <laughs> what was he supposed to do do you I, want him to just not keep texting you well okay so then i and he loves this part of the story so then <laughs> he's like about to drive back up because he lived in northern michigan that summer so he's about to drive up from campus to go back up And I'm, like, leaving. He, like, dropped me off at a friend's apartment, and I was going in there to hang out with them. And so I'm, like, getting out of his car, like, okay, bye, see ya. And he's, like, wait, like, can I talk to you about something? And I was, like, oh, shoot. Because at this point, I was, like, didn't really know what I wanted to do because I was, like, afraid to lose the friendship, whatever. Whatever. (laughs) He's, like, I – I forget how he said it, but basically he was like, I like you. And I was like, yeah, I like you too. But like, you don't have to text me so much. Like, we're good. Okay. Like, don't like, thank you. Have to text me. Like, it's fine. We're good. And so he was like, okay, cool. Like message received. So then he like goes up North and then like truly doesn't text me ever. And I'm like, like for how many days? Oh, I don't know. Probably like three. And I was like, Ugh. actually, no, it was definitely, it was like one day. Dang. And I was like, oh <laughs> my like, God. Wait. I miss him a little bit. So then, yeah, I think the next time he came down, we still hadn't kissed at this point. This is like, this is so wholesome. Yeah. So yeah, then he finally kisses me like the next time he comes down or something. I don't know. This is like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was becoming a Jackson episode. Wait, no, this is great. (laughs) Because I like, I haven't even, I feel like I haven't gotten like, the story from its beginning through like its entirety. So this is good. So he, so we, I had like moved into a new house. I moved from my apartment to a house. And so he was like helping me paint my room in this new house. I remember you telling me about this. Because I like like, didn't know how to paint. And he was like, you're doing a terrible job. So 
I just remember you, you telling me you're like, yeah, like Jackson painted my entire room. Like, isn't that so sweet? <laughs> I thought it was because I didn't know like, that oh. is that yeah. is like so sweet. I just like have a vivid memory of you being like, yeah, like I don't know. That I feel like that's when I was like, oh my gosh, she really likes this guy. Yeah, that was like such a good day because he just like helped me do everything. And I was that's like, so that sweet. was so nice. He did not have yeah. to do that, and. Yeah, so then we kissed that night. And then, like, he – then I was, like, so annoyed that he wasn't asking me to, like, be his girlfriend. So I literally asked him. I was the one that asked. <laughs> Wait, so how long – when was this? When did you ask? September. So, okay, he – So, like, how long were you guys, like – when did he – tell you he liked you and how much time passed before you asked him that was the summer so that was probably like july that he told me he liked me okay and then our first kiss was sometime in august and then it was like we were like everybody knew we were exclusively only seeing each other like yeah. It was just dumb. Like, literally everybody knew. So I'm like, okay, like, what is going on? And he just, like, didn't want to scare or, like, freak me out and ask me too soon or whatever. And so literally it was September 2nd because it was the day after my birthday. And he literally got me a birthday present, like, made me breakfast on my birthday, like, did all these, like, boyfriend things. So cute. And still didn't ask me. And so it was September 2nd. And I was like, when are You're you going to ask me? You should have been like, you know, what would have been a really good birthday present <laughs> that you didn't get me? <laughs> yeah, it's like a no, relationship. Like, yeah. No, it's so dumb. His reasoning so stupid. He was like, I was going to ask you tomorrow because three is my favorite number. So I wanted our anniversary to be on September 3rd. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> but it technically when I asked him was like after midnight on September 2nd. And so September 3rd was like our dating anniversary. But... Yeah, so that's – and then the rest is history. A month yeah. later was when I told him I loved him and he kissed me under the Beaumont Tower. So full wow. circle. Wow. Well, we love you, Jackson. Yeah. Such a good addition to the fam. Glad it all worked out. Yeah, well, okay. This has become a Michigan State East Lansing Slash Jackson Boudet episode. <laughs> we love – all three of those are great. So, no, but in all seriousness, like – MSU is such a special place and it's gone through a lot in the past few years with all the like, you know, like staffing drama, people that have worked and been affiliated with MSU that are not great, don't want to get into all that. There was like the school shooting last year, like just lots of like tragedies mm -hmm. and MSU has been in the news for not great things lately. But I feel like there is something so special about MSU and just like the people that are there that they really like stick together. And there's, you know, you meet somebody and you can say, oh, like you went to Michigan State and there's like an instant like bond connection, which I mean, I know a lot of colleges and schools have that. But I don't know. I just feel like especially with everything in Michigan State's gone through the last few years, if you don't know, people will maybe think of MSU in a negative light. So when you mm -hmm meet someone that like went to MSU too you're like oh so you know you know I can still be proud to like have gone yeah. to school here and and you get that um wow okay just getting a little emotional that was unexpected my goodness but, <laughs> yeah I'm just like so grateful oh my gosh yeah I was just say MSU has brought me so much like my friends and obviously my now husband like I am so grateful that that was like one of the best decisions I ever made was to go there and don't let people talk negatively about Michigan State. It's a great place to go to school. The people there are great and I'm super, super proud to have been there and gone there. Yeah, I feel like in general, like people that went to Michigan State have so much school spirit and like are so proud to have gone there. Like that's yeah. the sense that I've gotten from the times that I've been up there. So yeah. I'll I'll give you a hard time and say that I'm not a Michigan State fan, but I will always support deep down. Thanks. Okay. Um. Well, I feel like that's pretty much it. Is there anything else, Kelsey, no, that you have I to say? 
yeah i'm gonna start crying again if i talk more (laughs) so you should close it out for us okay we'll wrap it up but um just to let you guys know next week um there will be no episode because that is thanksgiving so we're gonna be spending time with our family as i hope that all of you guys are as well and um so no episode next week but to make up for that our exciting announcement is that we're doing a giveaway our very first giveaway and we're so excited about it so Kelsey do you want to tell us how we're going to do that yes okay so what we are giving away is a I have it right here actually a $100 Airbnb gift card for all your future travels yes two Apple AirTags and Wait, explain little, like what those oh, are in case people don't know. Okay, so an Apple AirTag is like a Bluetooth device. You put it in your bag and I'm, it's coming with these two little like keychain things that you can like hook on the inside of your bags or you can do it for anything um, and you can just track it. It's like a tracking device for um, luggage, I feel like is the most common thing people use it for. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really helpful if like your luggage gets lost when you're traveling or something like that. And the airlines, a lot of times are like, I have no idea where your bags are, but you can tell them like, look, it says it's here at the airport. Like just help me find where it's at, you know, whatever. And so you can just always track and make sure your bags are following you and all that. So yeah, you're getting two Apple air tags and these two little keychain devices and a hundred dollar Airbnb gift card. So that's what we're giving away for our first giveaway. Okay. So if you're interested in entering our giveaway, which low key, why would you not be? Those are some yeah, good prizes. Fun. Yeah. We're giving it away. So yeah, we, we got some good stuff for you, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to post an Instagram post about it tomorrow. So that will be Friday. Um, if you're listening to this on Thursday, but we're going to put a little post out there and you just have to like the post, follow us on Instagram at love at their pod and tag three friends in the comment. And if you want a bonus entry, there's two things you can do. So one is share a link to your favorite love at their episode to your Instagram stories, or you can leave us a review on Apple podcasts. So for your Instagram story, if you're private, and you tag us, we still might not be able to see it, I think. So maybe screenshot it and DM us to show that you have posted a story. And then on Apple Podcasts, when you leave a review, you have the option to put like your name. So if you're doing it, something that's like not obvious to us who you are, just screenshot that and either DM us on Instagram or if you have our personal cell phone numbers, you can text us that. If you've already left a review on Apple Podcasts, we know who you are. So we'll automatically enter you as a bonus entry as long as you do the other three things. And the giveaway is going to end on November 26th, 2023. Um, And we will announce the winner. We'll put it on our Instagram and announce who won. And we'll also send you an Instagram DM or contact you in some way but yeah so be on the lookout for the announcement on november 26th and hopefully you will be the winner yeah and also our next episode so like hallie said no episode next week because of thanksgiving but the following week we're going to be doing a q a episode so just we'll at some point put a question box on our stories um so make sure you put your questions in there i think we're also maybe going to do like an option to leave an anonymous question so um it's not like a spammy link if it looks weird i promise it's legit um but i think we'll probably do something like that too to give you the option um so start thinking of your questions that you might want to ask us it can be literally anything i just shared a lot of personal details so if you like (laughs) those kind of things more than like our normal travel content ask that can be we should have maybe saved this whole story for our q a episode (laughs) if we don't get a lot of questions but anyways think of your questions. It can be travel related. It can be anything. So, um, yeah, we're leaving this completely up to you guys. So we'll let you take it in whatever direction you want to take it. So, yeah. And I'll say we have to answer whatever questions we get, unless we get too many that we can't do. Should we make it into a little drinking game? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. Let's get, we had our very first episode. We were both drinking wine and then that just like fell off the train. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe we'll pull that out again. A little truth or drink action, depending yeah. on how juicy your guys' questions are. Yeah, make it 
make us sweat i oh already boy. cry basically every episode so <laughs> don't make me do that again all right well that is all for today's episode if you made it to the end thanks for listening we love you guys and we will not see you next thursday but we will see you the following thursday go green